What's going on guys and welcome to New Bark News for February 1st, 2019. Now today we're going to be covering five different articles. The latter four are all going to be focused around Nintendo. So if you're not a big Nintendo fan, feel free to kind of tune those out. But this first one's going to be centered around a new game that's exclusive to Xbox and PC. And that's going to be titled Operencia The Golden Sun. Now, this is going to be an RPG inspired by a lot of old school computer based RPGs such as Wizardry and The Bard's Tale. And essentially it's going to be based around a European folktale of the same name and it's going to be incorporating a lot of actual historical figures into the game as well. I mean, let's be real here. Who wouldn't want to see someone like Queen Elizabeth being a really awesome, like, brawler with a sword and everything else? It can be a really cool concept when it's done right. But anyway, what's a lot more interesting about this is this is adding to the lineup of games that launch on the Xbox Game Pass service the day that they are released. This seems to be a growing trend that Xbox is managing to pull in some pretty big titles that they can add to this the day that they come out, which makes the Game Pass a lot more interesting for people. A lot of people like picking up games day one to be able to play them right off the bat. That way they can join in on the multiplayer hype and everything else while it's fresh and be able to experience it before the entire thing gets spoiled for them if there's a story involved, everything else. So being able to have access to that with Game Pass day one is really awesome. This also it comes at an interesting time that it seems like Game Pass is managing to continue to progress considering that PlayStation after this month is dropping their PlayStation Plus free game support for the Vita and the PlayStation 3. So while I don't think this is going to make a huge difference in PlayStation 4 essentially winning Winning the console war this generation, it does bring the online services to be a little more tempting to switch to Xbox in that, hey, you know, one of the big perks of PlayStation just seemed to kind of go haywire here. Xbox is still offering free six, free 360 games each month in addition to free Xbox One games, and their Game Pass service seems to be constantly improving. So just one thing to identify there, I of course side with PlayStation, but to each their own on that front, you can definitely make a good case for both consoles. Now, while we're on the subject of this game, another interesting thing is on the PC half of things, this actually joins Epic Games' exclusive lineup in that it's a game that launches exclusively on Epic Games before it ever hits Steam's market, which adds to a list of growingly impressive titles, including Division 2, Metro Exodus, Hades, and Ashen. Epic Games, with all these games going to it right away, if they continue this trend, is actually starting to carve themselves out a niche in the computer market, and if they continue this, well, Steam might have to be starting to step up their game. I think it's a very interesting playing field that we're starting to see unravel in the ga PC gaming market, because for a long time, Steam's essentially had a chokehold there. So with all be that being said, guys, this article was brought to us by GameSpot, so let's go and move on to our second article of the day. And this one coming to us from The Verge is going to be the first of our four Nintendo news pieces. Now, this one's going to be about Dr. Mario World launching this summer. And it's going to be a mobile game that is puzzle-based with microtransactions, but being free to play. Now, microtransactions are something I've never really been a huge fan of in games. I just don't like them. I'd rather have the whole game when I buy it. I often sometimes even have mixed feelings on DLC because sometimes I feel like they should have been incorporated into the whole game. So I'll likely stray away from this. But for those of you that are into mobile gaming, it could be really cool to see something like Dr. Mario with Nintendo's powerful brand backing that to probably give you a very good product. Now it will be launching on both iOS and Android, which is also a good thing since I know for a long time with a lot of companies, apps were just starting off on Apple or just starting off on Android, then kind of going one way or the other. And it's always good Good to see something that is launching on both platforms since both are very popular. Now on the subject of Nintendo's mobile games also coming to us from The Verge is an article about Mario Kart Tour which is another mobile game Nintendo announced that was supposedly going to be released in March of this year. Now the game was announced la yesterday la one year ago exactly I was trying to say last year there and essentially it was going to be Mario Kart on the go at least from what we know of it but that's been delayed until the summer as well. Now for the delay on that, similar to the Metroid Prime 4 delay, just remember the Shigeru Miyamoto quote of, a delayed game is essentially good, but a rush game is forever lost. Now the idea there is, if you rush a game and it's bad, it's probably going to stay bad, versus if you take some time, you may be able to fix it. So we can hope that this turns out well once more. I'm not a big mobile gamer, but it's cool to see Nintendo trying to expand their audience some, and trying to evolve with the market. It's definitely a company I want to see continuing to make games for a long time, and I know there have occasionally been some articles here or there hinting that they may drop out of the console business eventually. I hope it never happens, but at least with these mobile games, they've got another foothold somewhere else should that occur. 
And to continue our Nintendo news, we've got another article from The Verge which actually cites Japanese news source Nikki about Nintendo supposedly making a smaller and cheaper version of the Switch. Now, this is interesting because there were a lot of rumors last year about Nintendo possibly developing a quote-unquote pro version of the Switch, which is going to have better outputs, possibly better audio, those types of things. This seems to be almost going in the opposite direction, something similar to like the 3DS and then it was followed up by the 2DS to provide a more budget option for people to be able to experience the console. And in some some ways part of me thinks this all this almost makes a little bit more sense since the switch has a lot of really cool features to begin with and whenever you're upgrading the hardware so it can output things it makes it so the games previously put out before that aren't necessarily optimized for that i mean you can do software updates and stuff but sometimes that even gets a little bit clunky it's similar to what we've seen with like the playstation 4 to the playstation 4 pro the games that were originally put out when the playstation 4 launched aren't necessarily as well optimized as they could have been for the new technology which i guess isn't a downside but it just makes it feel like the newer features aren't necessarily fully taken advantage of. Versus the budget option, this makes it so you can play all the games and you can still do it at a cheaper price. So I think that would be a lot smarter on Nintendo's part if they go this route from a business standpoint, especially considering the current $300 price tag on the Switch can be seem to be a little bit much for people. Now, we don't really know what it is that they may be aiming to remove because they would be cutting back some features most likely in order to bring this price tag down. Uh, some possibilities that come to mind for me are maybe it's like a purely a dedicated handheld so maybe you couldn't like hook it up to the dock and then put, display it through your tv or perhaps the joy cons are no longer detachable or in this article they reference the dock they also reference like possibly removing the cartridge slot now that to me seems very anti-nintendo since they've always been very pro cartridge they held on to cartridges a lot longer than other people those types of things and they seem very pro like physical copies of games and that type of thing at least in my eyes maybe i'm getting the wrong impression from them there regardless i think this is a really cool idea that way the switch is more accessible to a lot of people especially as the games library continues to grow stronger and stronger every day now the other thing that this article hints at is nintendo is hinting at possibly releasing a more like premium version of their online service meant for more hardcore gamers supposedly now we don't really know what this may offer perhaps it would be a more expansive collection of vintage game as this article suggests suggests perhaps it offers a bunch of new features perhaps it's similar to like playstation plus where they give you a couple free games every month something like that i could see them going that route currently nintendo's online service is a little bit interesting in that it's not necessarily quite as expansive as say the xbox online service or playstation network's online service but it's also a lot cheaper and it does give you access to a bunch of free nes games and rumor has it a bunch of super nintendo games at some point here so with that being said let's go ahead and move on to our last article of the day which is coming to us from ign and that is that Persona Q2 New Cinema Labyrinth has a confirmed Western release date, and that's going to be June 4th, 2019. So let's go ahead and start off with the fact that this has got some sick pre-order bonuses, especially if you're going for the Showtime Premium Edition from the United States, which keeps in line with a theme that Persona games have done here recently. So if you go with the regular edition, you're going to get buttons featuring each of the main protagonists that are featured in this game. This game's going to be featuring the male and female protagonist options from Persona 3, main protag from Persona 4, and main protag from Persona 5. All of which are awesome. Currently, I'm playing through Persona 4 Golden. It's my first Persona game. Absolutely love all the characters. I think the gameplay has been really good. There are a couple cringe moments with Yosuke, in my opinion, but I won't get into that due to um, spoilers. But still, the game is absolutely fantastic. So to see another one of these released at the peak of my current Persona hype in terms of trying things out is really, really awesome. So anyway, moving right along here, if you go with the Premium Edition, you're also going to get a 5-inch Karamara plush toy, the art book, and playing cards featuring characters from the game, which is just really incredible to see. Now, in terms of the Persona Q game, supposedly this is going to be fe focused around the Persona 5's Phantom Thieves. Can't really tell you anything about those because I haven't played Persona 5 yet, but supposedly they're going to be trapped inside of these dungeons with cinema-based themes, i.e. like movie genres, tropes, etc., which just sounds like a great time to see in action, and you essentially have to rescue them. Now, from what I understand of these Persona Q games, you can essentially juggle through characters from each of the Persona games that are featured in it this being persona 3 4 and 5 and add them subtract them from your party use like your guide from those games etc regardless it sounds like it's going to be really awesome it's a turn-based rpg which i adore those games a lot of times to begin with as long as they're well made which it's got the persona name on it and atlas so i'm sure it will be so this is a game that has gotten me really excited for coming out later this year guys anyway that's going to go ahead and wrap up today's new bark news be sure to let me know all your thoughts comments theories etc in the comment section down below if you enjoyed the video be sure to like and subscribe if not constructive criticism is always welcome and i'll catch you guys next time with some more new bark news